I'm gonna make this really quick. Good morning. Gosh, as quick as I can, being Lisa Stoll. Um, I just you see so much filtered garbage on here that's so well and good because, I mean, how many of you use this as like your own personal scrapbook of life, right? And we remember the best and we move beyond with the stuff that's challenged us, right? But the problem is we look at other people and think their highlights are what we're supposed to compare our life to, right? We all know that in our head, but we get trapped. So I'm here just <laughs> pouring out a little bit of the garbage that has been coming against my life really recently to share with you one reminder. I think as a believer in a world of people, many of which call themselves believers in Jesus Christ, we are really good at seeing evil in the ones that are <laughs> the things out there that are these big glaring devil suits, right? The, the wicked of the wicked. We're, we're, it's easy to see that and say, oh, it's a spiritual war. And to think that we recognize it. <laughs> Y'all, I felt this, gosh, for weeks just growing in me. And you are reminding me so clearly yesterday. <laughs> the spiritual battle isn't that it's not out there but that we have so blinded ourselves to just thinking that's what it is that we forget every day what's going on in our hearts and for our minds because that's where the battle is actually for. And we aren't fighting those battles as spiritual. We're fighting those against ourselves, And we have to stop. <laughs> Telling you all this for, um, gosh, the last few days, I would say, I just had this growing sense of just... Listen, We've had a lot of changes this year um, with one of our daughters going off to college and one of our daughters, um, it just in a awesome time in her life, busy, always gone, always just has this really full life right now. And, um, and then our other two moving from elementary to middle, which has its own changes. It's just, there's just been a lot. And the last few days, particularly, um, we had kids that were sick over the last couple of weeks. So I feel like that just kind of wears you down and you don't get as much time um, to yourself or with the Lord as you used to, right? And so those are prime times. Which, by the way, let me just tell you, like being with the Lord, when you sit with him and read his word and just talk to him, um, I'm just going to warn you on this. The more you do it, the more you have to. And you can't dive full in there with the Lord and spend this time and then think that you're going to be able to survive in seasons of your life where you don't. Because it's, he becomes all you actually know and all you need. So when you don't have time for that and your life isn't being filled in, you're going to tank quicker than any than you even realized it. So when you look around and say, well, they only spend five minutes, they only read their Bible, they don't even really know the Lord and they're doing okay. Here's the thing, they never knew him the way that you did. And the more space you put in there, more things you let fill up your life once you've already spent that time with him and you know his heart, it's going to eat away at you and at your soul and Ah, it's just going to be this whole thing. So I'm telling you all this to say, spend time with the Lord because it is the best guard you have against all this junk that um, wants to mess with our hearts. Now, <laughs> over a week of fighting sicknesses with kids and up at night and this one and that one and driving here and getting all, it just was a lot. And my own time, I had to sit here, but I could hear nothing and I could, nothing jumped off the page and it just was so routine. It was back like it used to be with me, not how I know it is. And I just was in that place and it wasn't good. And I was staying up way too late at night because it was the only time I could be, have some sanity, nobody needing me, right? Well, yesterday I bottomed. <laughs> yesterday I couldn't, um, <laughs> it was a day of, I couldn't even stop thinking about things that made me sad and crying. Like I just was going back to when we moved here and we had our friends and we thought things were one way and then things took a big turn and they felt called home and my mom had passed away and here we are and our church had completely, um, man, I've, I've still never experienced anything like that. Um, shoved us out the door as quick as they could, literally ran us out there. And we had no one. Things were hitting the fan with people that lived around us and it was like this vacuum sucking, right? 
all that to say all of that was yesterday. It was purposelessness and hopelessness and all of the things that, you know, you know, in your head, like aren't true because you're needed. You're wanted, like you're still here because the Lord loves you and he has a purpose for you, right? You know, those in your head, but you can't get past it. And you reach out to a friend who loves you to pray for you. And man, if you don't have those, it is, it's hard because we like to think that we're okay until you're not. And if you don't have people that will pray for you, like actually pray, not just say, oh, I'm praying for you and then never take the time. But the ones who sit before the Lord and cry out to him for you because they know his heart for you and they love you. Those are the friends you need. So go get yourself a lot of fun friends. But if you have one friend that will fight for you before the Lord, you are a rich person, right? So I reached out to that friend. Well, one of those friends. I've been blessed with a few Um and I just, like, I couldn't. It was it was so bad that I ended up... <laughs> I'll tell that. <laughs> um, no, y'all. My, my oldest came home from an oil change. And it was a whole thing. Um, I, it was a whole thing. And I ended up getting my butt back down to where she got her oil changed. And calling them out for taking advantage of her because she didn't know any better. And um, the pricing. And anyway, <laughs> after I apologized for getting so upset I was choking up because it had been such a day the lady who managed the place like can I give you a hug I was there I'm sharing all this to tell you that like man it can get overwhelming but y'all that is the epitome of spiritual battles it's the epitome of it like and if we don't know how to do this part of it well the other big battles that we see out there, like we just get desensitized and we sit back and we just wait for the end of the world and we think we have nothing to do. When there is a world out there dying to know the Savior that we know. So yesterday, <laughs> um, after all of this, I came home and I turned on a song by Torn Wells, um, Crazy About You. And that's actually why I'm making this message today. Why I thought it was that important. Um, I turned it on and I hit repeat and I think I listened to it for a solid hour and a half while I was getting some stuff done, cleaned up in the girl's room. And I, um, went into that hour and a half, a hot mess. I came out of that hot hour and a half to go get the girls from school, physically feeling like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I laugh because a few years ago, gosh, man, it was probably nine years ago, I uh, gave up drinking when I had an encounter with a friend who um, we were out for drinks and she just had so much heaviness going on in her life and she was pouring it out and pouring it out and pouring it out. And I was listening to her while I was drinking my margaritas and you know, that just, it sneaks up on you. And as soon as she was done, it's like I knew that I had something to share with her. Like it was on my heart. Like the Lord had my heart so turned towards her. But I looked at her and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot think of what it is. I am so, I had too much to drink. I'm drunk. And I said, Lord, help. And I have never experienced it before that time. But he completely, completely sobered my mind up. And I was able to pour out all of this. Like, I preached the whole prodigal son thing to her. I remember that. She grabbed her phone and she was, like, taking notes. And we were laughing because I could not think straight. And then all of a sudden, I could completely. Never experienced it like that. The reason I'm telling you that, though, is because when this stuff gets heavy, when life gets overwhelming, when you feel like, I don't have an answer. When there's, like, bills just keep piling and income isn't going up, but bills are going up. And the, what do you do, right? Like, life just feels too heavy, <laughs> You put in your mind and in your heart what is true. The God who made all the heavens and all the earth, who knit together you, he knows you. And he knows this time and place. And he didn't put you here to hurt you, but he put you here because at this time in history, he knew you had a chance to know him better than any other time in history. And that, my friends is what he wants more than anything. He wants you. So the spiritual battle that is raging around all of us, it's here and it's here. And you guys, we have weapons 
that actually work against the enemy. It's not alcohol. It's not antidepressants. It's not um, going to run a couple miles. I guess people will say they want to be, huh, I don't know, socially acceptable. And they want to say, oh, there's a time and place for those. I'm not really interested in being socially acceptable. I would challenge you to say, we're all trying to fill this emptiness and this hopelessness and this frustration and this struggle with stuff because those feelings suck. They hurt and they are heavy and we don't know how to get past them. But I'm telling you, we have a savior and he knows all of it. And if you will give him the chance to put the truth of what he has to say in your heart and in your mind, you will see the enemy run. You just will. And you will walk out of your situation and go, how on earth did I not know this love? So I want you to go. I want you to write down crazy about you. Crazy about you. I think it's called that. Torn walls. And I want you to listen to it. And then I want you to listen to it again. And then I want you to listen to it again. And on your third time, I want you to be aware of how you feel. And then I want you to remember it. And when you start to get stressed, when you start to think these thoughts that you're worthless, that the world doesn't actually need you, that you'll never figure this out, that you have no idea, I want you to remember that feeling. And I want you to go listen to it. I want you to go listen to the song again before you go to get a cup, a glass of beer or a glass of wine, before you pop a pill, before you <laughs> go and yell at somebody, before you do any of those things. I want you to put on a song and I want you to sit in the presence of the Lord, whether or not you even believe him, but I want you to give your heart a chance to hear what he has to say about you, what he thinks about you. And I want you to see if your physical body won't physically respond to the one who knit you together. You guys, this is the ultimate of spiritual warfare. It's recognizing the battle that's raged on this earth that's against you is coming for your heart and learning how to guard it. He's crazy about you. Man, we've heard that for so long. But it's so true. It's not a one day religion, guys. We're one day, one day, one day. It's a two day. Here, right now. Sure, there's more to come in the future. But today is the best day. If you know this love. If you have this peace that is completely separate from anything going on in your world. Because it passes every human understanding. Because it doesn't come from here. It comes from Jesus. It comes from the name that we throw around and we we kind of just think we know. My prayer this morning when I woke up, when he woke me up was like that the weight of glory on his name would be so full that we couldn't even say his name out of our mouth without experiencing the tangible presence of that glory in the person of Jesus Christ. That's my prayer. All right, y'all. Have a good one. And remember, he is, he's insanely crazy about you. He is.